All right, welcome to the third and final part of the bullet spread tutorial. So in the last one, we got pretty much everything working. So you can zoom the circle in and out and it will fire the bullets accordingly. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys how to do is make it so that you can kind of cluster the bullets more in the middle. So it's a little bit more realistic and not just random. So to do that, we're gonna be using a float curve. So if we come back here, try click, and go to miscellaneous and select curve. And we want to select curve float, like so. And we will call this the bullet spread curve. So if we open this up, if you've never used a curve before, it's basically just a line graph where you can define points. So we want to add two points to start with. So just right click anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Say add key and then select the key that was added, which is that little triangle, and set it to zero, zero, and then right click again, and say add key. And then for this one, we wanna set it to one, one for right now. And if you hit F, or no, if you zoom out and you select both of them and you press F, it will kind of like focus it so that it covers the whole screen nicely. So what this is, going to represent is how much the bullets are going to spread. So, and I'm trying to think of how to explain this. This graph represents how much the bullets will spread based on some random number that gets passed in. So basically each time a bullet is about to be fired, a random number between zero and one will be selected. So let's say they select 0 0.4 is the random number that gets generated. So it's gonna to come to this graph and it's going to say, okay, 0 0.4 on the X is about right here where my mouse is. And so it's going to get the Y value of that, which is also 0 0.4. And it's going to say, okay, now let's find a value between 0 and 0 0.4 of the radius. And that'll make it so that if it's linear like this, it'll make it so that there's a linear like uh, curve of the bullets so that they're more likely to get um, spawned in the middle of the circle and maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but after we create this and show you how it works and you can edit it you'll understand it probably a lot better so I'm gonna actually add one more curve or one more key to make this little or give me a little bit more control here so I'm gonna add another key and then I'm gonna select all of these I'm gonna right click and change this to auto to make it smoother and I'm gonna drag this guy over oops oops only want to drag this middle guy over like here so this is going to make it so that the bullets are really, really clustered most of the time, but there's a small amount of chance that they'll be outliers. So again, I'll re-explain this after we finish writing the code, but for now, just have it look something like this, and make sure this one's at 0, 0, and make sure this one is at 1, 1. Okay, so this is actually going to be pretty simple to set up. If we come back here to our first person character, and we go to our event graph and we come up here where did i write this all right so we come up here to our random point in a circle we're actually going to be modifying this pin that goes into max using that curve so the first thing we want to do is unhook this so alt left click and we're going to be multiplying this radius by some value so we'll say float multiply so like i was saying before we want to get a random float uh, in the range of 0 to 1, so random float in range, make sure 0 is min, max is 1, and we're going to use this value to index into our curve. So in order to get access to the curve, uh, we need to get access to that variable, so add a little variable over here and call it the bullet spread curve, and hook it up to the shotgun category and then change the type to a float curve object reference. And then if you compile it, you can select it. So we wanna select our bullet spread curve. And then we can just drag this guy in and say, get float value. And the time that we want is our random float. So it's gonna get a random value on the X. So a random value down here between zero and one. And then we wanna take that and we want to pass it into here as our multiply. And then that gets multiplied by the radians and that goes back into our max. So 
if we run this now and we zoom out to make it a little clearer, we click, you can see a majority of the bullets are going towards the center, but it still allows the potential for some outliers. And if we change this curve to be, you know, so basically the more you drag this to the left, the higher chance there'll be of outliers. So if we run this now, when we run it again, you can see now there's a lot of outliers and it's all random. So it's not, you know, it's not gonna be like a perfect cluster in the middle, but you can see now you have more bullets going towards the outside. Uh, and you know, if you move this up, you'll get even more bullets going towards the outside. So you can just kind of drag that around to match, you know, to match whatever you're looking for in your game. So yeah, that pretty much covers the whole tutorial. Uh, I spent a long time trying to figure out all this math. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. The link's in the description. And I also have a Discord if you have any questions. It's in the description as well. Feel free to join that. Or we just want to say hi, that's fine too. Alright, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.